President Tinubu inaugurates a National Economic Council, makes strategic appointments. We must harness the growth potential of Nigeria. Petrol subsidy removal, National Economic Council working on palliatives to mitigate effect on citizens. And some of the recommendations that were made include the state case plot pumps have a strong capacity to handle the implementation of palliatives to the new and existing poor and vulnerable individuals, household and farmers, local economy operators in the country. Gas flaring, House of Representatives to investigate lingering cases by oil companies. Ado committee to look critically into these issues that uh, have been raised and you have six weeks, six weeks to deliberate and bring the resolution there after to the house. Good evening, thanks for joining us on NTA Network News. I'm Cyril Stober in Abuja, Hingino John Adams is in Lagos. And you can follow this news live on our website at nta slash live.ng or any of our social media handles displayed on your screens. President Bola Tinubu has given expression to the commitment of his administration towards social and economic revival of the country as he today inaugurated the National Economic Council urging, during the inauguration held in the State House. President Tinubu enjoined the council to commence work in earnest and to come up with ideas that will help enhance the economy of the country and the fortunes of its people. We must harness the growth potential of Nigeria and bring about serious development to bring us from a potential nation to pragmatic economic development in a rapid manner. Their expectation is on that. As a veritable source of articulating policies and programs that are people-oriented cannot overemphasize that. It is also reassuring to note that the public members of this country are behind us. They want reforms and they want it quick to have a meaningful impact in their lives. The bill is chaired by Vice President Kashim Shatima with the 36 state governors and the CBN governor as members. In the meantime, the National Economic Council has set up a committee to provide palliative measures to mitigate the effects of fuel subsidy removal. This is part of the outcome of the meeting held immediately after inauguration of the council this Thursday. We'll bring you details in subsequent bulletins. And President Bolatino today received former head of state General Abdul Salami Abubakar at the State House. The former head of state arrived at the villa at half past noon and was received personally by the president himself. State House correspondent Musbao Dan Wahab reports that the meeting held behind closed doors lasted about 30 minutes. Now visiting the president, uh, one of your successors for the first time, can we have an idea of what has happened? Well, I was away out of the country uh, when he was inaugurated. Now that I'm back, I thought before I proceed to Mina, 
Uh, I should come and pay my respect to His Excellency and wish him well and uh, to pray for peace in our country and uh, uh, all the best uh, as he govern the country. Some piece of advice? Well, uh, let's always give peace a chance. It's absolutely necessary because if there is no peace, there is no country. And uh, Nigeria, there is enough for everybody. So let us uh, try to be each other's keeper and also put our own hands on deck to move the country forward. Your Excellency, we have seen some reactions to the subsidy removal. What's your own opinion about this? Well, you know, this subsidy this, uh, issue has been on and on and off and so on. But uh, Mr. President has taken a decision to remove it, and I hope we will all see how to help him to make sure that it succeeds. And there's more coming from the seat of government as President Bola Tinubu has approved the appointment of some of his special advisors. A statement by Director Information in the State House, Abiodun Oladunjui, indicates that Mr. Delia Laki is Special Advisor, Special Duties, Communications and Strategy. Mr. Yau Darazu, Special Advisor, Political and Intergovernmental Affairs. Mr. Wali Edu, Special Advisor, Monetary Policies. And Mrs. Ulu Vahajan, Special Advisor, Energy. Others include Mr. Zaki Osadidiji, Special Advisor, Revenue. Mr. Nuhu Ribatu, Special Advisor Security. Mr. John Uguchuku Wajumogu, Special Advisor Industry, Trade and Investment. While Dr. Mrs. Salma Ibrahim Anas is appointed Special Advisor Health. Well, at this point in time, uh, we're hoping to link up with uh, Mr. Delia Lucky. Yes, there he is. He joins me live. From the State House, Mr. Dili Alaki, Special Advisor to the President on Special Duties and uh, 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 Communications and Strategy. Thanks for joining us on Network News. Thanks for having me, sir. All right, it's been two weeks since the President took out of Thank office. You. It's been two weeks since he took out of office. And uh, how would you assess governance within this period of time, particularly regarding some major decisions taken recently? I think it's uh, been very exhilarating. It's been very exciting. It's been very refreshingly different for Nigerians. In fact, Tinubu, President Tinubu has broken all myths in this country. Uh, someone did capture the essence of the last two weeks, you know, very succinctly. And the, the man said, in all his adult life, he's never seen any government hitting the ground running, running vibrantly, brilliantly, and ferociously as President Tinubu has done in the last two weeks. And that says it all. This man has demonstrated that public trust and confidence can be won. And even in the discussion we had this afternoon, where we were reviewing all kinds of uh, happenings and major government policies, because that's what we do, and that's what he does. He monitors very effectively and efficiently. And uh, we concluded that the action plan, the title of his action plan, We Need Hope, has actually come to reality. Okay. Because Nigerians have been given a new lease of life. The renewed hope agenda. And all the promises contained therein are being effectively, efficiently, and proficiently implemented to the letter. Okay. So, so therefore, right. there is what you call promise made, promise kept. Fine. Well, uh, the president has also made it. some major appointments within this period, uh, yours inclusive. 
Um, while they're asking you to assess yourself, we might just say, what's your take on this in terms of the quality of the personnel and what they can bring to the table? Can you come again? Well, I said the president has also made some major appointments within this period, including yours. Now, right. while we're not asking you to assess yourself, we right. might as well ask what you think about the quality of the human resources and uh, the probable impact on governance, what they bring into the table. Well, the personalities, the antecedents, the track records, the experiences and exposures, selective and common, of those uh, people appointed speak for itself. For instance, if you analyze each person on that list and you study the antecedents of each person, you come to the conclusion that these are round pegs in round holes. And the list has, as short as the list is, it has attempted very effortlessly to cover all areas. It is gender compliant, it is geopolitically compliant, it is performance compliant, it is effective, intellectual, practical, political, in every area of human endeavor. Even that short list of eight people fit the bill. And, and President Belak Ahmed Tinubu is noted for headhunting. No one does it better than him in this country. And that has been amply demonstrated over the years, even since his time in Labour State. We used all of this during the campaign effectively. Some people doubted us, some people argued with us. Even those who strudently disagreed with us are coming around to give kudos to President Bela Tinubu. One of them even said, and it's on video, that he, not, he didn't vote for Bela Tinubu, but he's now regretting it, but he's now begging the president to accept him into his will. And I told him that he's already accepted because this is a man with a large heart. He has the largest heart in this country. So in short, the quality of the personnel that he has appointed so far is an ample demonstration of his tenacity of purpose, of his headhunting capacity and capabilities, and the, the uncanny ability to put round pegs in round holes. I don't think anybody does it better. Okay. Well, uh, the, the president in his inaugural speech promised reforms in the monetary sector. We see he has appointed uh, a special advisor on uh, monetary policy. Um, and now with the news of a single import and export window, what becomes of the foreign exchange regime and the economy? Well, the man in, the, uh, in charge of monetary policy, that's Mr. Wali Edo. Uh, Mr. Wali Edo is known in that industry as a guru. He's a man who holds his own. And uh, you can see that in the short period, like in the last 48 hours, you have seen what has happened in, the, in, in, the, in, in terms of monetary policy, in terms of uh, the unification of the exchange rates. Uh, regime in terms of the central bank uh, uh, releasing uh, policies with frenetic pace and the right policies. And you can also judge by the acceptance, wide acceptance of these policies by the national and international communities. And you can see how the stocks, stock market has been jumping. In fact, uh, there's a report about a 15-year high of the stocks due to the efficacy of the policies of President Ahmed Bala Tinumbu in the area of uh, uh, economy, in the economic area, in monetary policies and all that. And we are looking forward to more. In fact, he has just started. Okay. He has just started. He's just putting in place the structure of government. All right. And don't forget that these brains that is assembling mean the best from the country because they take a cue from the, from the leader. And that is what leadership is all about. And I did say this during the campaign. Once you have a leader that encapsulates the three critical factors of leadership, which are vision, knowledge, and courage, 
then there's nowhere else to go but up. And Bola Metinumbu encapsulates all of this vision, knowledge, and courage. And this has been demonstrated in the last two weeks. All right. <laughs> this is just the beginning. That's all I can say. Okay. Nigeria's are in for all more. Right. All right. We'll have to leave it there and uh, say, uh, Mr. Dili Alaki, Special Advisor, Special Duties, Communications and Strategy, thank you for uh, obliging us with this interview. Thank you very much for coming on. And congratulations on your appointment. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you very much. All right. Time for a quick break. We'll have more reports after this time out. Our administration will never yield. Only on your behalf, but never rule over you. We shall consult and dialogue, but never dictate. We shall reach out to all, but never put down a single person for holding views contrary to our own. Walking on the road feels like walking on hot coals. How do I cope with this heat? Hmm, and how do I cope with that bad odor? By staying 5 degrees cooler. Body odor is caused by germs, and on hot days, the sweating and odor are more. That's why you need to get the new improved Etol Cool Soap, which offers up to 5 degrees instant cooling sensation and protects you from 99.9% .9 odor causing germs. The Coalition of Youth Groups in Nassau State welcomes you to the Grand Reception in honor of the former Executive Vice Chairman and Chief Executive of the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, Professor Melwalima Mohammed Sani Haruna, OFR, FNSE, in recognition of his contributions to the development of Niger. Saturday, June 17, 2023. Venue. New Kefi Hotel, Kefi in Nassar State. Time, 10 a.m. Signed, Muhammad Ibn Yusuf, Patron, Coalition of Youth Groups in Nassar State. Are you a dealer in cars, jewelry, precious metals and stones and luxury goods? Are you into real estate or are you an estate agent, surveyor, valuer, developer or broker? Are you into the hospitality industry, luxury business or are you a market broker, tax consultant or an accountant? Do you have a supermarket, police betting and consulting or construction company? If you have, go and obtain your certification from the Special Control Unit against Money Laundering, SCUMO, and be free to do your business within the ambits of the law. SCUMO has the responsibility to monitor, supervise, and regulate the activities of designated non-financial business and professions, DNFBPs, across the country. Please note that the SCUMO certificate is not a guarantee of legitimacy of any business. To register, visit www. .org. For collection of certificate, visit any EFCC office nearest to you. Remember, registration is free. SCUMO, securing Nigeria's business environment. This message is from Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Would you like to join us on this mission? Yes, but how? Just one question. How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I have been using it for years. Madam, the regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet, you need Hapik 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains removal. Hapik sticker formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleanish. Wow, now I'm convinced, Helen Paul. Really? Yeah. The next house is yours. <laughs> right, you too could be one of the 20 Zenith Bank customers that will win 150,000 Naira every two weeks from June 1st, 2023 until May 31st, 2024 in the Zenith Better Life Promo 3. To qualify, simply open a Zenith Bank account. For more information, visit www.zenithbank.com forward slash better life. Live the better life with Zenith Bank. If you want to become something, become a child again. Why be a patient? If you must worry, then worry about winning. Why worry about germs? When you come home, bring tales and stories. Why bring in germs? 
Shield your families from germs. When Dettol is a part of every household bucket, then you and your family can stay protected from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Everyday use of Dettol keeps my loved ones protected. Thanks for staying with us. And uh, just a quick reminder that the National Economic Council has set up a committee to provide palliative measures to mitigate the effect of fuel subsidy removal. State House correspondent Abdurrahman Usman Jabrila reports that this is part of the outcome of the meeting held immediately after its inauguration this Thursday. The National Economic Council is hereby inaugurated. Action immediately after inauguration the council recommends providing palliative measures to the vulnerable. Some emergency and palliatives, social needs on so many issues ranging from small farmers, holders, MSMEs and other interventions. It's a 750 million USD from the World Bank and uh, it has commenced a long time ago and some of the recommendations that were made include the state case platforms have a strong capacity to handle the implementation of palliatives to the new and existing poor and vulnerable individuals, household and farmers, local economy operators in the country. Additional funding can be sourced from the federal government, World Bank, development partners, as well as Nigerian private sector. The council also recommends ways to utilize increase in revenue to reduce impact on workers. There should be an adjustment, consequential adjustment, estimated at 702 billion to 919 million eight naira as part of uh, the allowances that should be given as petroleum allowance to all workers and as well as 23 or 45 billion month monthly uh, offer to cushion the impact to workers. Another suggestion that will go a long way in making sure that there is review of our salaries and wages. The issue of flooding was also part of the council's meeting, giving state governments one week to make their submissions. Members were also to liaise with the office of the vice president, office of the secretary to the government of federation, and also all the private sector and other well-spirited Nigerians to help in tackling this flooding in the country. The council recommends legislative support be given to automotive companies to expand production capacity of electric vehicles and create more job opportunities. Another area is also in terms of uh, um, um, local content. How much of it do you want to encourage? So there are all sorts of issues bordering on legislation if we decide that we want to uh, support local production. Supporting and encouraging local refining of petroleum products was also part of the council's recommendation. Other issues to, that will be sustainable in cushioning the effects of subsidy because we realize that Removal of subsidy is not anything novel. It's been done in the last 15 years by different countries around us. Ghana has done it, Ethiopia has done it, Egypt has done it, Kenya has done it. So there are obviously things to learn from countries that have regulated successfully. And some of the things that we learn from these countries are things that it did in the areas of providing personal income tax reforms, which are basically decreasing the tax rate bracket, saying those at the lower end of the tax bracket are either tax exempt or begin to pay lower taxes. Now that the council has been inaugurated by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, what remains to the council is to commence work in earnest for quick revival of the country's economy. From the State House, Abraham Osman Jibrila, NTA News. 
And staying in the state out, the 10th National Assembly is promising a good working relationship with the executive towards meeting the yearnings and aspirations of Nigerians regarding all-round development. Now, Chairman of the Assembly and President of the Senate, Godswill Akpabio, spoke to journalists after visiting President Bola Tinubu at the State House. Correspondent Musba Enwahab reports that President Tinubu also received former Head of State General Abdul Salami Abu Bakar. President Bola Tinubu came down from his exalted office for a moment. An August visitor was at the State House. A befitting welcome to the khaki uniformed men who finally delivered the democracy being enjoyed in the country today. Mutual respect between the former and the incumbent leaders. Again, it was another congratulatory visit, but with a piece of advice from someone who had felt the seat of power about 25 years ago. Let's always give peace a chance. It's absolutely necessary because if there is no peace, there is no country. And uh, Nigeria, there is enough for everybody. So let us uh, try to be each other's keeper and also put our own hands on deck to move the country forward. Your Excellency, we have seen some reactions to the subsidy removal. What's your own opinion about this? Well, you know, this subsidy this, uh, issue has been on and on and off and so on. But uh, Mr. President has taken a decision to remove it, and I hope we will all see how to help him to make sure that it succeeds. Not an unusual visit by the President of the Senate and his deputy, but the message is that of hope. He has taken the right steps. The stock market is rising. And a lot of people are very excited with the steps he has taken so far. And we are also very happy. And there is renewed hope, not just in terms of the economy, but in terms of the stability of the country. It will affect all facets of life, including security. So I applaud him, and uh, we thank God for him, and we welcome the development so far. As the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, ours is to back him with necessary legislations and also to bring to the fore uh, most of the things that are happening in our various communities through motions and, uh, and observations so, so that the government can take more action since we are closer to the grassroots. The 14th Emir of Kano, Mohamed Osanusi II, came visiting with his many caps and his passion for child education, particularly in northern Nigeria, and economic development came forth. So I came to thank him for the steps he has taken to put this economy on course. As you know, many of the issues that we have been talking about, uh, the subsidy that has caused a hemorrhage on the fiscus, the multiple exchange rate regimes, and so on, uh, these are issues that I have personally been talking about for a long time. And I'm happy that on his very first day, he has addressed these issues and the markets are happy. And it is important uh, when the government does the right thing for us to give them feedback. It's not always uh, when they do a wrong thing that you complain. The pioneer chairman of the ruling party, Bisi Akande, was also at the state house. People will expect the rejigging of our party, the APC, and the re-establishing good governance in Nigeria. And it will go on record that APC brings good governance to Nigeria. Some presidents and former state governors also visited the president. From the state house, Muspa and Wahab, NT News. And following the inauguration of the 10th Assembly and the emergence of Senator Godswill Akpabu as Senate president, the rival contestant, Senator Abdulaziz Abubakar Yari, has promised to work with the leadership of the National Assembly and the executive arm of government for effective and responsive nation building. National Assembly correspondent Mohammed Rabiu Ali has details. In a briefing, Senator Abdulaziz Abukariari, who admitted defeat from the outcome of the contest, pledged to work with the present leadership of the National Assembly. I gave the Senate President assurance that we are going to work together as a team to protect that institution that where we are today and also 
I had a lunch discussion with my people. 46 of us, but unfortunately, our 49 are fiat. So I would uh, wonder from where three came from. <laughs> so I told them that the tax ahead of us want to come together. Three, to support the leadership so that Nigeria can grow better. Senator Yari appreciated the opportunity given to him by his colleagues, calling on them to support the leadership of Senator Ababio for better legislative process. Senator Yari commended President Bola Ahmed Tinibu for allowing democracy to play during the inauguration of the 10th Assembly. Meanwhile, Senator representing Bauti South, Abdul Ningi, has applauded President of the Senate, Gosula Abio, for the assurance to carry everyone along, irrespective of differences. Briefing the Senate press call, Senator Ningi said the minority with 50 out of the 109 seats will be on the watch out for the composition of standing committees of the 10th Senate. In Abuja, Muhammad Rabi Ali, NTN News. The House of Representatives has mandated an ad hoc committee to investigate lingering cases of gas flaring by oil and gas companies, as well as revenue due to government from gas flared penalties. National Assembly correspondent Mitaire Ikben reports that the House has also constituted ad hoc committees to fine tune its legislative agenda. The resolution to checkmate the excesses of oil and gas companies engaging in gas flaring followed a motion of urgent public importance. In the last decade, approximately 9.05 billion US dollars has been lost to gas flaring. This money would have offset 23.62% of the country's total foreign debt. Our uh, other committee to look critically into these issues that uh, have been raised. And you have six weeks, six weeks to deliberate and bring the resolution thereafter to the House. In other motions, the House resolved to direct relevant agencies to intervene in Goli erosion devastation in Imo and the Kwaibom states. All the ecological fund office to immediately commence the control of Mpwamiri and the Sunjaba Goli erosion. Remedy the menace of Goli erosion in Ikote Tanobiobon communities in a bad local government area. The house is also to mediate in persistent clashes between border communities in Eboi and Benue states. The lawmakers rejected a motion seeking to declare the emigration of Nigerians abroad as a national emergency. Speaker Tajuddin Abbas announced the constitution of seven ad hoc committees to assist the House with its legislative agenda. Meanwhile, members of the South-South Caucus of the House at a briefing urged the federal government to protect fishing communities in Akwaibom State from devastation occasioned by remapping of local government areas. The House of Representatives has adjourned plenary for a three-week break that will terminate on the 4th of July, 2023. It has been a learning curve, especially for new members of the House, but no doubt the break will be used to fine-tune the legislative agenda of the House. From the National Assembly, Mitaire Ikben, NTA News. The federal government is urging Global Fund to sustain intervention to consolidate gains in the fight against the scourge of malaria, tuberculosis and HIV AIDS in Nigeria. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Senator George Akume, made the plea while receiving an audience, the delegation from the Global Fund and the Country Coordinating Mechanism, CCM. Kenneth Nani reports. For the next grant cycle, the Global Fund has a total of $16.2 billion, and this engagement at the office of the SGF seeks equitable disbursement of fund to ensure that Nigeria keeps up the pace in the fight against tuberculosis, HIV AIDS, as well as malaria. Out of this uh, uh, $16 billion, we have allocated to Nigeria a little bit more than uh, $1 billion. Uh, it will be one point, uh, around 1.1 billion. 
my mission here in uh, Nigeria with my team is to help the country to put together the plan on how to manage this money for the next, uh, the next uh, three years. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Senator George Akume, is appreciative of the immense contributions of the organization in stemming the tide of these dreaded diseases in the country and sued for continued action to absolutely eradicate them. I'm happy to observe also that uh, co-financing commitment is uh, very much okay. I want to assure you that uh, we'll do something uh, to solve these uh, problems. We need this intervention to continue and this little, little problem shouldn't stop it at all. Despite prevalence, the group, however, acknowledged that Nigeria is among countries that have achieved great feat in the treatment and management of tuberculosis. Kenneth Nanim, NTA News. Time now to link up with Hingino John Adams in Lagos for more reports on Network News. Hingino. Thank you, Cyril. With the recent signing of the student loan bill into law by President Bola Tinibu, indigent students in Nigeria now have an opportunity to fulfill their dreams of acquiring higher education. Correspondent who spoke to some Lagos residents reports that the new law is drawing applause. President Bola Tinibu is making good his pledge of revitalizing the education sector. By signing the student loan bill into law, the president has matched his clarion call, let the poor breathe, with action. This, some students described as a life-changing opportunity. It seems it's something that no past president has done before, so I believe it's a welcome idea. But I send myself to school, so those kind of loan can actually help me. The time limit we have to raise our school fees most time, it's limited. So going for a student loan is actually, I welcome that idea. While stipulating that applicants or their family income must be less than 500,000 naira per annum for them to be eligible for the loan, the Act also provides that the loan applicant must have at least two guarantors, a civil servant of not less than level 12 in the service or a lawyer with at least 10 years post-call experience a judicial officer or a justice of peace. I must commend the new government for that initiative. And it couldn't have come at a better time uh, than now, where the poverty rate in Nigeria has hit almost 63%. You know, it means that 63% of Nigerians are living below uh, $2 a day, which is about 1,000 or 1,400 naira a day. It shows that there is a kind of concern uh, by this new administration that there is a kind of crisis within the education sector and that it is ready to tackle it. As a caveat, intending beneficiaries are barred from misusing the opportunity as such applicant will be disqualified if he is proven to have defaulted in respect of any previous loan granted by any organization or found guilty of any exam malpractice among others. A 60-day promotion by maker of varieties of cookies, OK Foods Limited, targeted at rewarding consumers nationwide, has been unveiled in Lagos. Management of Pure Bliss OK Foods Limited said mouth-watering prizes will be won by lovers of Pure Bliss biscuits throughout the promo period. Diana Ajali tells us more. So you gotta have a smile. Either solid or snacks. Food plays essential roles in the human body, including promoting good health. OK Foods Limited is complementing that fact by bringing on board varieties of delicious cookies and snacks to the delight of its consumers. Pure Bliss Consumer Mega Promo is another platform initiated as part of the company's social responsibility in their operational environment with the aim of adding value to their consumers nationwide. Any of the Pure Bliss promo cookies or wafer packs has stand a chance to be one of the 60 lucky people to win 1 million naira in 60 days. A total of 90 million naira is up for grabs. Within 60 days, we are going to be rewarding um, 60 consumers with 1 million naira each. And in addition to that, we are giving 30 million naira airtime. 
across the biscuits category and within the category in general it's never been done so it's huge it's something that you generally don't see in a biscuit industry so it's a powerful promotion uh, we want our consumers to feel happy about it and we want to uh, gratify them with this promotion observers from consumers regulatory body lagos state express their views this way i believe it's going to be a fair selection and um, we will ensure that we attend all the draw process to ensure that it's free and fair to participate in the ongoing pure bliss 60 days millionaires in 60 days promo consumers are to send sms using a unique short code 8011 for just 10 naira only via location after purchase of the promo packs of different cookies ranging from pure bliss milk cookies 50 grams and more to stand a chance of winning 1 million Naira cash prize, as well as 100 Naira recharge card from Pure Blaze. The promo is expected to run from 31st May to 31st of July 2023. In Lagos, Diana Ajale, NTA News. Another break beckons. The news will be back after that with Cyril in Abuja. all giant hands to work hard so that we build a country for our grandchildren. My hope is that we develop this nation where every citizen is given his due right that is a transparency, honesty and integrity. Put the interests of this country first, first and foremost interest of Nigeria is being one nation, one people. We need a famine to, uh, uh, to put things right, things that have gone wrong before uh, 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 to try and, uh, you know, and, and put right, uh, you know, for, this, uh, for, the, for the love of country. Who wants to tell me the answer? Good. This way. I give my soul, you get my time and dedication. Hey, stop that. You know, get waiting for life, where I know if you do. Cause all the dream where we don't dream must to come true. He must to show for you, cause he's show for me. Together we will ride against the mountains and wait to make you dead for me. Cause I did it for you. Together we will ride against the mountains away. Teach the advanced way with Glow LTE Advanced, the powered through data networks in one. Get a Glow SIM or dial star 301 hash. If you want to become something, Become a child again. Why be a patient? If you must worry, then worry about winning. Why worry about germs? When you come home, bring tales and stories. Why bring in germs? Shield your families from germs. When Dittor is a part of every household bucket, then you and your family can stay protected from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Everyday use of Dettol keeps my loved ones protected. My skin is my identity, my strength. It's unique and deserves care made specially for me. New Nivea Radiant and Beauty Advanced Care with five oils and five vitamins, 48 hour nourishment. Helps reduce appearance of stretch marks in just two weeks. New Nivea Radiant and Beauty Advanced Care for your shade of beautiful. Would you like to join us on this mission? Yes. But how? Just one question. How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I have been using it for years. Oh, madam, the regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet, you need Hapic 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains removal. Hapic sticker formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleanish. Wow. Now I'm convinced, Helen Paul. Really? Yeah. The next house is yours. In the heat of the summer, Walking on the road feels like walking on hot coals. How do I cope with this heat? 
Hmm, and how do I cope with that bad odor? By staying five degrees cooler. Body odor is caused by germs, and on hot days, the sweating and the odor are more. That's why you need to get the new improved Etol Cool Soap, which offers up to 5 degrees instant cooling sensation and protects you from 99.9% .9 odor causing germs. This guy must think he's the chairman of Noisemakers Association. Maybe you better show him. No, tell him who the real boss is. Guy, come off it. on this mission yes but how just one question how do you keep your toilet clean i use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains i have been using it for years madam the regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes to disinfect your toilet you need Hapik 10x it is specially made for germs and stains removal. Hapik sticker formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleanish wow no i'm convinced helen paul really? yeah the next house is yours <laughs> Back in Abuja, the Central Bank of Nigeria has announced the unification of all windows into the import and export window of the foreign exchange market. A statement by the CBN's Director of Financial Markets, Angela Sere Ejembi, says all applications for medicals, school fees, BTA, PTA and SMEs would continue to be processed through deposit money banks adding that the operational rate for all government-related transactions shall be the weighted average rate of the preceding day's executed transactions at the INE window calculated to two decimal points, with all transactions to be cleared by a central counterparty to ensure transparency of orders and seamless execution of trades. The statement adds that the operational hours of trades shall be from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Nigeria time. While the cessation of a raise to 200 rebate scheme and the Naira for dollar remittance scheme will be with effect from the 30th of June 2023. Further guidance shall be communicated as the public and authorized dealers are enjoined to abide by the rules. More on the business climate coming from Benny Adams on Business News. Thank you and welcome to business. Reactions have continued to trail the central bank's announcement of a single foreign exchange market where experts express optimism of stability and attraction of foreign direct investment. Experts say there might be some volatility at the market, uh, but express optimism that the rate will eventually stabilize with time. On the, the positives, we are weighing negatives. Because what's clear now is that in just two days of trading, uh, after a day after that policy came out yesterday, uh, Forex fell to 700. If my statistics are right, as of today, we're talking about you know, 634, 635. So we are just going to be having, which is what we, we pushed all the while with the last administration, float this thing, let the market determine, you know, the real cost of our forex. Uh, it, it might be a little bit difficult, a little bit tough, considering that we are running, you know, some kind of trio, three-tier uh, economy, if you may, where you have your underground, where people, this wouldn't make any sense to them, where you have your informal, where, okay, it's going to be um, impacting on, you know, the cost of your everyday business. And then when you have the formal and structural sector that will act, that should actually guide, okay, be the pool and not the, the push factor. Okay, if you have your formal economy, you know, the streamlined, functional, growing, strong, it, it begins to pull uh, the underground and then the informal. Others are of the view that liberalization of the foreign exchange market would unlock the huge potential for investment, jobs and capital flows in addition to investor confidence which is expected to create a positive impact. First, we are going to see a much more transparent foreign exchange market. A foreign exchange market that is, you know, devoid of the usual corruption and 
having to know people, having to get contacts before you can get the foreign exchange. We are likely to see a lot more confidence of investors, which will lead to you know, better inflow of foreign exchange into the economy. Okay. And once you have an improved inflow, either from foreign direct investors or from portfolio investors or from the diaspora remittances, export policies, oil companies, once we see that kind of inflow, which the current, with the new policy dispensation will encourage, then we are likely to see a much improvement uh, in, the, in, in the exchange rates. We are likely to see less uh, volatility. Uh, and of course, and this will also help exporters. Because f before now, exporters have been complaining about the fact that they cannot continue to repatriate their export proceeds at the official rate of 460. They feel that that was penalizing them as exporters. Now, you didn't see the private sector as it were in the, in the real times, you know, being the ones who are the drivers of our economic growth and development. Now, I think that is going to start happening now because, you know, investors are not going to be scared, you know, of, you know, thinking that there are three levels. There are privileged people that just wait there, get these currencies at, and just do a round trip and you don't have to do any work and then you become rich. And from the monetary policies, the Nigeria's annual inflation rate rose for the fifth straight month to 22.41% in May 2023, from 22.22% in the previous month. According to the latest inflation report released on Thursday by the National Bureau of Statistics, says food inflation rate quickened to 24.82% in May, from 24.61% in the previous month. And looking at the movement, the May 2023 inflation rate showed an increase of 0.19 percent points when compared to April 2023 headline inflation rate. And on year-on-year -year basis, the headline inflation rate was 4.70 percent points higher compared to the rate recorded in 2022. The report also says food and non-alcoholic beverages contributed most to the acceleration of the headline inflation with 11.61 followed by housing, uh, water, electricity, gas, and other fuel, 3.75%, clothing and footwear, 1.71%, and transport, 1.46%. Others are furnishings and household equipment and maintenance, 1.13%, education, 0.88%, health, 0.67%, miscellaneous goods and services, 0.37%, restaurant and hotels, 0.24%, alcoholic beverage, tobacco, and uh, cola, 0.24%. Uh, Recreation and culture, 0.15%. And communications percentage. Well, that is business news. Network news continues after this break. The heat of the summer. Walking on the road feels like walking on hot coals. How do I cope with this heat? Hmm. And how do I cope with that bad odor? By staying five degrees cooler. Body odor is caused by germs, and on hot days, the sweating and odor are more. That's why you need to get the new improved Etol Cool Soap, which offers up to 5 degrees instant cooling sensation and protects you from 99.9% .9 odor causing germs. Fighting here and there, we don't want it at all. Killing people today, tomorrow, we don't want it at all. And we don't want separation. You do your own, I do my own. Make you they go. My kid, I, no, 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 no. We don't want that one. We may quarrel and disagree, but let it be on the table of dialogue. No blood, chaos, war, violence. Let us stand with our nation as one people. And we must also stand for the armed forces. There are our husbands and wives. There are our brothers and sisters. Please support the armed forces whose lives are always on the front line to protect our nation. Nigeria is your own, Nigeria is mine, Nigeria is our own. Our uniqueness is in our oneness. Our oneness is our strength. Our boss was like, a decent fashion designer only gets over midnight. Midweight. <laughs> My 
man like Osime. Papa just a chop Italian league like Oha. Uh -huh. These are real housewives of Abuja. Eh? Those women are fire. My brother's OJ say again. My relationship with Mane is Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> you can stay in waiting for me. Why don't you treat the here? Imagine this officer. I will clear out of life. Ah, don't cause. Bruh, come on, dear. This is no matter. The biggest dragon for Westeros, then slow picking face up. Climb down. Right down like Formula One. Check, yeah, catch me. Uh uh. Ah! <laughs> you found the gold. And asked her for just shaking a piece of the pie. And she killed him for it. Oh, baby. Fear me, you know. No one tells a story like we do. Showmax, Africa's original streaming service. <laughs> Embodiment of virtues of love, honor, and leadership as demonstrated by the late Alhaja Abibatu Mogaji, mother of President Bola Tinubu, was the thrust of admonition at a special prayer for the repose of her soul. Onutu Yakubu reports that friends and associates of the president gathered at the National Mosque Abuja for a 10th year remembrance prayer. The convergence of these Islamic scholars underscores the importance of engaging in supplications to seek Allah's mercies on the soul of the deceased in Islam. But for this gathering, the focus is to remember the indelible marks left in the sands of time by the late Yaloja General of Nigeria, Abibatu Ashabi Mogaji, and to ask Allah to shower his blessings on our soul. Everything is fleeting. Everything is ephemera. Everything will come to an end. Our mother left footprints. She left heartprints. She made contributions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you and I to think and prepare for this tomorrow. Special prayers were also offered for God's guidance and protection on President Paula Ahmed Tinubu. Lord, you will renew his strength. His strength will be renewed more than the eagles. Governor Babajide Sawolu stressed that parents must pray for the success of their children, adding that the prayers of the late Abibatu Magaji has manifested in the emergence of Bola Ahmed Tinubu as the president of Nigeria. This was a great woman. This was a mother indeed. This was a mother that wanted the very best for her children, for her grandchildren, and for everybody that had an interaction with her. Indeed, the prayers of the faithful are always, are always answered. Islamic scholars took turn to pray for the peaceful coexistence of the country. In Lagos, Musa Toliat, NCA News. Well, that report by Musa Toliat from Lagos concludes Network News tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Cyril Stober. Good night. Oh, my God.